Aleluya. The people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. Is the Lord God. The Lord God Almighty, the earth is full of your glory. The earth is full of your glory. Sing it one more time. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. And the people say, Holy, 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 Holy. And the people say, Holy, Holy, Holy. Is the Lord. some sessions. I want you to know that remarkable things are happening in the spirit. Hallelujah. Remarkable things happening in the spirit. Why do we need the spirit of revelations? Romans 11 verse 33. We are going to pray. We are still praying. Romans 11. Why do we need the manifestation of the spirit of revelation? Romans chapter 11. He says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and the knowledge of God. He says, How what? Unsearchable. Are his judgments and his ways past or beyond finding out? God surrounds himself with mysteries like chariots. And it takes the agency of the spirit of revelation to help us understand this mystery deity and tap from his wisdom to reign. He says, oh, the depth, the dimension of the mysteries that are contained in God. He says, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. But the Bible says, no man knows what is in the spirit of a man, except the spirit of that man. He says, so also, no man knows the mind of God, what is in his spirit, except the spirit of God. He says, the spirit has the ability to search as deep as it is. He has capacity to search. And he can search and reveal it to the saints. Listen, let me tell you something. Divine strategies, divine secrets, we call them mysteries. That's the key that has turned ordinary men to wonders. Something about the operation of the kingdom. As big as any door it is, it requires a key for it to open. A door can be locked as big as it is if the key is missing. You can roam around that place forever. Hallelujah. It takes the key. And we are going to be praying very briefly. Men and women of God have been here leading us very powerfully. But I want your eyes to be open to something. And I pray that God will grant you grace to see. You see, what you hear is information. You don't see information. When your eye sees it, it's no longer information. 
because the eye is the light of the body, not ear. He said, I will stand upon my watch. Habakkuk chapter 2 verse 1. He says, and I will set myself upon the tower and I will see what the Lord will say. That's revelation. When you can see what God is saying, it has entered your spirit. You can hear what he is saying and not change. But when you see it, you must change. Hmm. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. I have been praying seriously that we will comprehend the gravity and the necessity for the manifestation of the spirit of revelation in our lives. I said it yesterday. Revelation is, you see, one of the things I've seen in the body of Christ, and I'm and, and part of it, but I've seen the folly of men. The Bible says, ever learning, but never coming to the knowledge of the truth. We think revelation is accumulation of many things somebody else does not know. So our, our pursuit is to accumulate as many strange opinions that are known only by a few people. And we call it revelation. No, sir. Revelation, listen to me. Revelation is not just an information that only a few people know. No. That's not revelation. Revelation is not even knowing what God has said. I said it yesterday. If you know what God has said, brothers and sisters, and you cannot make it work in your life, it is useless. We keep mocking ourselves with information that has no power for manifestation. There are many pastors who can tell you they know everything about church growth. They know everything about healing, everything about miracles. The end of revelation is not that you know it, that your life becomes a testament of its reality. Hallelujah. So it's not enough to just know, oh, I know this, I know this. Is it working in your life? Is it working? Is it producing results in your life? I'd like you to be frustrated in a positive way tonight. Let, let an anger rise from you and say, Lord, something I know is mocking your grace in my life. I claim to know this. It's not working. It's not working. I claim I have so way. But at every weather blows a little, I'm a victim of everything. No, 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 no. Is it a lie? There is a reality of the life of God. You see, one of the greatest frustrations in the body of Christ is that we are carrying scriptures, which is okay. But we do not stay with the spirit to open us up to the mystery. So we have many scriptures. We quote it and recite it and gather accolades to ourselves we cannot defend. So lots of people say this guy can quote scripture. But there's nothing in our lives that show the reality. Let me tell you one result will answer a thousand questions. I know this. I believe in results. I have no business participating in anything that does not have the capacity. He says so therefore let your light so shine, not your explanation. Let your light so shine before men. I want them to see it. For herein is your father glorified when you bear much fruit. Hallelujah. Two things I'm going to share with us very quickly. You want the spirit of revelation to come upon your heart. You can sit down please. We are going to rise up to pray. I just want to I was searching the scripture and just asking the Lord what he would put in my heart as I admonish us. Please pay attention. You will never encounter the spirit of revelation. Listen. Listen. When there is no willingness. You see, most people mock God. We think God is, is just a stupid person who doesn't have anything to do in heaven. Is there a willingness in your heart to walk in the truth thereof? Hallelujah. John 7, verse 17. Media, you help us. We'll look at a few scriptures. I found this scripture very interesting. John 7, verse 17. Everyone read if you can. It's projected. One to read. If any man will do his will, he shall know of the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether I speak of myself. He said, if any man will 
Once your will is there, the revelation will be given to you. There is no commitment in many believers to grow. There is no commitment to do great things for the kingdom. Therefore, there is no need for the manifestation of the spirit of revelation. Because the spirit of revelation shows you certain things to the end that you will do something with it. Hallelujah. The willingness to obey attracts the spirit of revelation. The willingness to obey, not the willingness to know. The willingness to obey. That Lord, as you show me, and that grace for performance comes, I kick into action immediately. God will always give us revelations and cry that we do something with it. It's not enough to know a truth and keep it there and it does not bless you. Matthew 25. Matthew 25. The Bible tells us a very interesting... Um, when you read from verse 14 to 30, the parable, popular story, the parable of the talents, right? The Bible says he gave unto one, you know, all kinds of talents. And the Bible says he gave one five, listen, he gave one two, he gave one one. The Bible says they went immediately and traded it. Are we together? What did they do? Immediately, when they got it, they swung into action. And they brought forth results. The one with five brought five more. The one with two brought two more. But one held the revelation. And he was just moving around with it. And after a while, the master came and said, Okay, I've come for accountability because I want to improve you. I want to promote you. The one with five who made it ten, he said, well done. The one with two who made it four, well done. Listen to what the last person said. I know you are a hard man. You like reaping where you did it so. So I thought I would just bury it. You bury seeds, not talents. When you bury seeds, they will grow. When you bury talents, they become useless and unprofitable. And he was angry. And hear what the Bible says. He collected the talent from the one and took it and gave someone. This is the mystery in the kingdom. The more you appreciate revelations and receive them, the more you qualify yourself for more. You, you peg the limit of the access of the spirit of revelation in your life with disobedience and refusal to act. Your journey to the mysteries of the kingdom is at the mercy of what you know so far. God watches it. Because he said, gather the crumbs. Let there be no waste. Gather the crumbs. I showed you something about a key that can supernaturally bring sinners. You ignored it. You played around with it. But you are looking for the mysteries that bring church growth. And God says, no, your heart is not right. I gave you a dimension of revelation. It was mismanaged. Several people want Rema, and I'll tell you why. I've taught here again and again. The reason is because in the body of Christ, we have this childish attitude of gathering crowns for ourselves based on our ability to compare scripture with scripture. So the pursuit of many people into the mysteries of God is to have something to defend their ministry. They are not interested whether or not results come. So when Benga comes up and preaches and combats everybody with mysteries, and then Pastor Alpha and Pastor Femi, they are now nodding and saying, Man, this guy is deep. No. Revelation is more than that. You cannot want revelation to use it to cover your inferiority. It's more than that. It's God speaking to us now. That's why a lot of people want it so that when you go to a church and they say, Okay, just. Can you just um, share, give us something, maybe a little charge, greet the people and collect offering. So instead of going to a, the popular scripture, you now say go to the book of Revelations and they say just for offering. And you are happy. And you derive a sense of honor and God is watching. He's saying I gave you something that can change a destiny. And you bring it and tie it down just to, to massage your ego before men. He said, they comparing themselves with themselves are not wise. Revelation is more than. So that we don't make God look like a charmer or a magician, like a jenny that will twist his hand and use. Is your heart committed to obey? 
When God gives me a revelation, I hold on to it. The word of the Lord came to me some years ago. He said, if you will let men see me, there is nothing I will not give you. So your willingness to obey. But let me show you two very quick mysteries. I pray that the Lord will open your eyes. Keys that can attract the manifestation of the spirit of revelation. Just two of them. Number one, Songs of Solomon chapter 5 verse 2. If you want to be a man of deep mysteries, listen, surrender your night time to God. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? What I'm teaching you is very deep. Dedicate your night time. I don't mean don't sleep. Just say, Lord, once it is night and the sun goes down, I dedicate this time for encounters. He says, I sleep, but my heart wakes. My body may lie down and sleep, but my spirit is waiting. Like a watchman, I expect you to come. I expect you to show up in my room. I expect to wake up in the morning, writing. Ask everyone who knows me. I sleep with my Bible, notebook, biro, my phone. I expect mysteries to wake me up. Dedicate your night time. Listen, great men of the spirit understand the mystery of the night. The Bible says, and then the secret was shown unto Daniel in the vision of the night, not the vision of the afternoon. The night time is the time when men see. The night time is the time when men see. One more scripture. Job 33. Job 33. We'll look at 15 and 16. The Bible talks about Job, the greatest man from the east. Right? Let's look at something Job said. One to read. 15 and 16 is projected. One to read. In a dream, in a vision of the night, when deep sleep falleth upon men, in slumberings upon my bed, what happens? Then he opened the ears of men and sealed their instructions. Listen, there are encounters. When you go to sleep in the night, strange things happen on earth. The same way alien spirits and demons come and sow seeds. Many things happen in the night. Listen, many great people have been cheated, not discerning the mystery of the night. Did you know in the spirit, you measure a whole day beginning from the night, not morning. And the evening came and the morning was the first day. And the evening came. And the morning was the second day. People die in the night. Somebody who had enough faith to stand in the afternoon. By night, something happens. It's not just the absence of light. There is a mystery of the night time. Everyone who prays seriously will tell you there is grace to pray in the night. Are we together now? Dedicate your night to God. I've done this in my life. I'm telling you, there is almost no night that I don't have an encounter. Some sort, if it's not a direct encounter with God, some kind of scripture. I can play, I have the whole Bible on my phone. I can find a chapter, put it on repeat, and put it on my ears. The, the thing looking for rest is not my spirit, it's my body. And the scripture of playing will not interrupt the body from sleeping. So body you can sleep while the spirit continues. How many of you have had times when you are sleeping and what you were listening to continues in your sleep? And you begin to live it like a vision. The same way it was at the same time. Your ears, you are on the bed sleeping. But in that vision. And Jesus was at the Nazareth and you are there. Those encounters, you wake up with surges of power running down from your head to toe. You think you just had a nice nap. But when you continue, one day you begin to see possibilities activated in your life. Because strange encounters. Sacrifice your nighttime, people of God, to God. By sacrifice your nighttime, I don't just mean wake up in the night and pray, although that's wonderful. 
But I'm saying dedicate your night time. That whether awake or asleep. It's like a, a covenant with God. You are saying Lord my night time belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, oh, oh it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Every time I go to sleep, I know that revelation is coming. Sometimes even before I sleep, the presence of God is already filling the place. And I just sleep under that atmosphere. Strange encounters. Oh king, don't be hasty in what you want to do. Give us time. You just had a dream, no interpretation. You want to kill everybody. No. Allow us. And Daniel went. There was a God that reveals secret. But things don't just happen. You see, when we don't understand the way spiritual things are regulated, we mock ourselves. God is almighty. But his presence is not manifested anytime, anywhere, the way you want. There is a protocol, even to the coming of his presence. The Bible says, then the vision was revealed. In the night time, when all the noise of unbelief, all the people that jam the spiritual atmosphere with unbelief have gone to bed. Revelations. Sometimes he will wake you and you just stand and sit down like a zombie. You can't pray, you can't read your Bible, but you are just silent. You don't even know what is happening to you. After one hour, you sleep back. You thought you were just watching, but there was a transfer, like from a feeling station to you. It will take days before you understand what just happened to you that night. You just know that you woke up and you could not sleep. You were watching, you seemed restless. Because the language of God, I've taught here and I've taught in the school of ministry, the language of God is not English, it's not French, it's not Greek, it's not Hebrew. The language of God is light. And when that light comes to you, sometimes it will take a while. That's what happens to some of you when you fall under the anointing. It's not every falling under the anointing that is impartation as it were. Or maybe demons going out. There are times what throws you down is the word of God to your spirit. He said the voice of God upon the waters is mighty. But it will take a while. Like a snake that swallows an animal. And then you begin to see it unfold. We are going to pray. One more mystery. Psalm 49 verse 4 is something I've known for a few years and has blessed my life. This is the reason why you find out that every time we pray, we create an atmosphere of worship. Psalms 49 verse 4. Everyone read please. I will incline my ear to a parable. It says, I will open my dark sayings upon the harp. That means anywhere I begin to hear sounds of music and worship, it will attract the spirit of revelation. The prophet knew this, right? He said, bring me a mystery. I need to see, I, I need to know what is happening. But bring me a mystery. The Bible says the moment he was playing, the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, fill these ditches with water. I say, you may not see wind, you may not see rain, but the valley shall be filled with water. Listen, surround your time with God, soak it with worship. Sometimes you need to just allow worship, just play. In 2005, I did a strong research, Jewish worship and the mystery of God's presence. Searching for what it was in these Jewish songs and the presence of God. I found a lot of things I cannot share for time's sake. But we are going to pray. A prayer of dedication of our night time to God. And say, Lord, beginning from tonight, I surrender my night time forever to you. That you will open me up to tremendous mysteries. Divine secrets. And you are going to pray and say, Lord, ride on the wings of my worship. Can we rise up very quickly and pray? Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. Oh Lord. I dedicate my night time. Up to you. This 
visit me whether asleep or awake give me revelations show me divine secrets show me divine strategies lift your voice and begin to pray this is me oh god visit me oh god visit me oh god please make sure you are praying in the night time when men go to bed i keep my spirit alive to receive from you strategies for business strategies for ministry strategies for marriage oh, receive it from the realm of the spirit divine solutions strategies to issues of all kind of concern are you praying Lord, reveal that which I need to do in the night vision. As I sleep, let me see. As I sleep, let me see. I come for the spirit of revelation through the mystery of the night. Through the mystery of the night. Through the mystery of the night. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I like us to pray and say, Lord, every mystery you have shown me so far that I have ignored, remind me and grant me grace to obey. Lift your voice and pray. Every mystery that has been shared upon this altar, every truth you have shown me, and out of carelessness, I ignored it. Out of carelessness. I refuse to act upon it. You showed me what will make my children better. I ignored it. You showed me what will bring prosperity to my life. I ignored it. You showed me what will keep me long and healthy. I ignored it. Remind me by your spirit and grant me grace to walk in it. Pray. Grace for obedience. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, it's not what you do that makes you prosper. It's how you do it. There is a way God can show you. Do A and B and C. And it will take you from one dimension to another. Please hear me. It's not doing things that brings results. It is the revelation behind what is being done. Everybody opens a shop. You can open it the way you want. But God can tell you no. This is a secret I give you. It may not work for anybody, but I give you. He said, where fell the axe head? And they showed him. And for that condition, the secret was to carry a stick. It was never done anywhere again. And he threw it, and the axe head floated. You are going to pray and say, Lord, what is the strategy to come out of my predicament? Show me this night. Lift your voice and pray. Please pray, pray. Lord, there is a strategy. There is a strategy to pay that rent. There is a strategy to take that business to the next level. There is a strategy for my church to expand. There is a strategy for my finances to change. There is a strategy for my prayer life to jump back to life. There is a strategy to open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes. Open my eyes by the spirit of revelation. Ah. 
Alléluia. Alléluia. Listen. Everything you have is enough if you know what to do with it. Did you hear what I said? Everything you have is enough if you know what to do with it. The Bible says there was five loaves and two fish. Jesus knew what to do with it to feed 5,000 people. Sometimes what you need is not more. What you need is strategy. Strategy. Business people hear me. You need strategy. You do things foolishly, jack of all trade, master of none. You will crash your life. You need strategy. Pastors, you need strategy. All this copy and paste thing people do. Because others are doing it, you do it to know. He says, thou shalt hear a voice from behind saying, this is the way. Walk in it. We are going to pray one more time. And say, Lord, show me something applicable to my own life and destiny. What is the strategy for my marriage? What is the strategy for my finances? What is the strategy? Please lift your voice and pray. What is the strategy for my ministry? What is the strategy for my business? Reveal it to me, O God. Reveal it to me. Divine strategies. Keys of the kingdom. Keys of the kingdom. Divine strategies. Keys of the kingdom. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When you know what to do, it will end stagnation in your life forever. But if you do not know what to do, you can remain in a position for a long time. You can pray, but you need strategies. It was David Yonggi Cho who was crying that God would show him the keys of church growth and God opened his eyes to the concept of self fellowship many men of God carried it hook line and sinker without revelation and split their churches into pieces because it came by light the Bible says right prosperously because of truth not because of desire because of truth hallelujah was Bishop Wedeko who was sharing that the Lord gave him a revelation about corporate tithing, right? From Hebrews 7 verse 7, that and without contradiction, the lesser is blessed of the greater. There are strategies. A man can be grounded for many years, but one key will open you up. I've shared with you my, my, my story. From the scripture, God told me, said, um, how did he put it now? Um, to be good to everyone. He said, for in it, many of you have entertained angels unaware. I saw that scripture and it entered my spirit as light. And one time there were women. I was buying sugar cane. And there were two women, strange women, who were also buying sugar cane. And it was in my spirit, based on the light of that scripture. Just bless them. And I said, Mama, you people, don't worry. You don't have to pay. I'll pay for you. And they were looking at me, trying to lose their this thing that they put money in. And I think it was 59 or so I gave them. And these women started blessing me. They were blessed. You know how these people bless? Honestly, whether they were human beings or angels, I do not know. They were blessing me. But of all that they said, I, I didn't remember. But I know one of the women spoke to me and said, my son forever walk upon gold. That was what she said to me. Forever walk upon gold. What you see is a mystery. I've, I read many books on church growth. And I appreciated the revelation, but truly did not connect to my spirit. And I said, Lord, show me. Give me the revelation for this ministry. Mark chapter 1, 2, 3. My goodness. When God opened my eyes, he said Jesus was in the wilderness. Men came. He went 
on the mountain top, men came. There was a mystery. He said it was noise abroad that Jesus was in town. Who did the publicity remained a mystery and it entered my spirit. It was noise abroad. They met Jesus and they said, All men seek for thee. It may not work for someone else, but that's a revelation. That's what I told you. It's not what you do. It's the light that backs what you do. Someone may refuse now and say, Koinonia doesn't do any publicity. And people come. And you may not publicize your program and you will see empty pews all around. Because I'm not against publicity. Every man works on the authority of the light that came for him. He said, and God made two great lights. One to rule the day. And the other to rule the night. And the Lord taught me that there is a kind of revelation that you need in times of pain, hardship, and obscurity. It's called the night time. There is a, the light that rules in the day may not be the same pattern in the night. And so you must sustain ability to survive. Whether in the daytime when things are working well or in the night time. That's why when, whether people cry in session, whether they cry whatever, there is a light that rules in the night. When you read a Bible story and it ends as a story, you just had information. But when something rises from scripture and it is opened up to you, Utopian Enoch said, Philip asked him, he said, Understand what thou readest. Do you understand? He was reading, but he did not understand. The Bible says, He prayed upon them, He opened their understanding. The last prayer, Father, open my understanding. Open my understanding. I'm tired of reading the Bible like a storybook. Open my understanding. Please lift your voice and pray. Open my understanding. Open my understanding. In the name of Jesus, he said, in all thy getting, get understanding. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before I speak over your life, please bring out your prayer request. Oh, 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 oh. Revelations 5, verse 12. I'd like you to participate fully in what God is doing. You hear the testimonies that are coming. Testimonies don't just happen. They are made to happen. Saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb. We started by seeing that which you received. To receive power. And then riches. And today to receive wisdom. Some of the answers to this request will require wisdom from on high. That's why we are crying for the spirit of revelation. Lift it up please as we pray. Before I speak over your life, I'd like you to say, Lord, any request that requires wisdom, not just prayer, not just casting demons, reveal to me, reveal to me the wisdom strategy I need to apply. Some of those things you are lifting they don't even need binding and casting anything. Strategies. Wisdom. Please pray. Shika paroto soto prege de bele de bash. Japa pakata balada bakoroto subata. You have received for me wisdom. You have received for me wisdom. 
You have received from me wisdom. You have received from me wisdom. Hallelujah. Please lift it high. For those who are just coming tonight, I want you to understand the revelation of what we are doing. The Bible says how that Hezekiah made the request bear. There are two requests we have, we have before the Lord. The first is the request of our expectations. All the things we want the Lord to do for us on the positive. The second represents our challenges. Everything that has mocked the name of the Lord. Please feel free to collect even that of your loved ones. And the Lord said every day I should speak over it. Hallelujah. He said I prophesied as I was commanded. Not as I wanted. As I, as I was commanded. In the name that is above all names I pray. Father. You are not a man that you should lie. Not the son of man that you should repent. You have instructed us. And we are childlike enough to obey you. I speak over every request. Every expectation. The Bible says. That our expectations will not be cut short. I'm praying. Let miracles begin to happen on those lists. Let miracles begin to happen on those lists. In the name of Jesus Christ. Worthy is the Lamb who by his being slain has received for us wisdom. Every strategy you need to answer some of these requests, receive it this night. I prophesy visions. I prophesy revelations. I prophesy dreams that will tell you what to do in the name of Jesus. No matter how impossible the expectation is, because you have faith for it, I declare, may it become yours. May it become yours. May it become yours. In the name of Jesus, may it become yours. He said, that which we have heard, we first heard it, then we saw it, then our hands handled it. You have heard it, you have seen it, I command your hands to handle it. In the name of Jesus, I command your hands to handle it. The Bible says the word became flesh and dwelt among men and we beheld his glory. The answer that has been hanging in the realm of the spirit, it must become flesh and appear before men. It must become flesh and appear before men. In the name of Jesus Christ. Every challenge you are lifting, you have cried about it. Your family members have cried about it. It has brought tears to your eyes. The Bible says we do not have a high priest. Who has not been touched with the feelings of our infirmity and praying in the name of Jesus? Every spirit behind the tragedy that is lifted, I'm not speaking to the request first, the spirit behind the, tra the tragedy, this night we release the fire of judgment. Hear me. If there is any human agent, Behind the tears on that list, this night, in the name that is above the, all names, we command judgment. We command judgment. He said, Pharaoh will not let you go except by a strong hand. In the name of Jesus, whoever has refused to let you go, to turn that challenge to a testimony and pray this night. He said, if you do not release me, I will take your own firstborn. Whoever has taken what is yours, I will not release it. We seize their peace tonight. We seize their peace tonight. In the name of Jesus. And at night, the king could not sleep for the sake of Daniel. Early in the morning, he went. He said, Daniel, as a God whom you serve, kept you. He said, oh, leave king. He says he has sent angels. I pray. Angels can be sent to rescue, but they can send to punish. Angels use hailstone and stone people with it until they release the destiny of God's people. I pray. Whatever must happen 
for your testimony to manifest. We permit it to happen this night. In the name of Jesus, whatever must happen for your testimony to manifest, we release it to happen. Hallelujah. He said, I will overturn, overturn, overturn. I will keep overturning until it gets to your place. I don't care how many times God must move in that family. Even if he has done it before, my God, do it again till it gets to your turn. May God do it again till it gets to your turn. Every negative report will change it tonight. Every verdict, listen, any man threatening you, hear me. Every man was a baby in the hands of a woman one day. Ask Pharaoh, God knows how to humble men. Every dagon standing to mock your God as represented in the challenges you have written. The same way dagon fell before the ark, may that challenge fall tonight. May that challenge fall tonight. Hallelujah. While I was preparing for this meeting, I got a very humorous text from, I think it was the assistant MD. He couldn't make it today. I'm sure tomorrow he will share it. He said he had been praying and praying that we trusting the dad for a car. And humanly speaking, it may not be easy to get that car made financially. I think his parents are missionaries. And he said just yesterday, somebody walked up to the father and gave him a brand new jeep. Brand new it's not of him that will it, nor of him that run it, but of the Lord that showed mercy. That you don't know the road does not mean it's not here. I'm praying for you again in the name of Jesus. Whatever your eyes must see to solve these problems, may it be revealed to you this night. There are some of you, the solution to your problems is in the account of somebody. The solution to your cry is in the endorsement of somebody. The solution to that jobless situation, it is within the power. You say, I am also a man under authority. I have a jurisdiction and I have influence. I'm praying. Whoever needs to show up to help you. He said a man was crippled that could not help himself. But he says some men carried him toward the sink and brought him down. Whoever needs to carry you from where you are. Whoever needs to come in for your family. Whoever needs to show up in your destiny. Wherever they are this night in the name of Jesus. They will see you in their dreams. They will see themselves helping you. Please believe what I'm saying. They will see themselves blessing you financially. The Lord will instruct them in the night. And they will be compelled to obey. Listen. You have been begging some of them. They are not responding. Now we ask God. By revelation. Since you have begged, begged, begged. And they will listen. I pray for you. Through their dreams. May they see themselves helping you. As a confirmation that they are your helpers. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Please sit down very quickly. Let's write the prophetic focus for tomorrow. Hallelujah. John 12, please, 24. Let's establish the prophetic focus for tomorrow. Don't miss tomorrow. I'll be teaching you something very powerful. You'll keep progressing every day. God is showing us mysteries. I'd like us to read, everybody who want to read. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except a corn of wheat falls to the ground and die it abided alone but if it die it bringeth forth much fruit tomorrow we are going to be examining the mystery of sacrifice our prayer i'm going to be showing you how it must take sacrifice in the spirit for a man to go up i'm not talking money you must give up something to go up it's a law you cannot hold on to what you have and still rise so our prayer tomorrow is going to be Lord, grace for sacrifice. We hate this language in the body of Christ because many of us think when we talk sacrifice, we are trying to add to what Jesus has done. 
There is nothing that is of worth. Nothing that is of worth. Listen, the birth of anything valuable is painful. Anything valuable. Many people have not understood this law of sacrifice. It has grounded lives, grounded ministries, grounded businesses, grounded all kinds of things. He said, except, except it falls and dies. When you bury a seed or plant a seed, the first thing that happens to that seed is that it dies. When it dies, it doesn't fear anything again. Because the last enemy to be defeated is death. I will show you the mystery behind the boldness of many people. is because they have died. There is a way God kills your fear by exposing you to it. And what made you cry yesterday, you will walk through it. You no longer will have fear. Sometimes God does not take it away. He brings it face to face with you. And you will find out that every challenge comes in his magnified form. When you stand and face it, it's smaller than it looks. Rise up on your feet. Tomorrow the Lord will help us on that. In the name of Jesus Christ. We, are, we apologize for the communion. We may just take it on Friday. Please, before we leave, uh, I'd just like us to appreciate a dear um, woman. She's been here. She would not want me to do that, but I promised I was going to do it today. I'd like us to appreciate Madam Ladi. Um, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Prof, my God bless you. Thank you so much. Um, every time she comes, she hides. And sometimes she can rush to Kaduna for lecture. Those who are in mass come, you know her. She's your lecturer. Um, she can run for lectures and still run back to make sure that she meets the meeting. And she will hide somewhere and say she doesn't want to be known. She's been teaching me Hebrew. And um, she taught me some things I'm going to share with you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So thank you so much, ma. We appreciate you. The Lord honor you. Let's honor her. And again, every other person. Hallelujah. There are a lot of elderly people, some lecturers. They can just come hide outside. Wherever you are, we honor you and we bless you in the name of Jesus. Lift your hands as I speak over your life. Yes, Lord, we believe you. You have waited three days laboring in the spirit and fasting. The Bible says, meditate upon these things. It said, give yourself wholly to them that your profiting will appear unto all men. I'm praying between tonight and tomorrow, may your results begin to bear fruit. Let it be, let it be evident. May your life begin to bear fruit. In the name of Jesus Christ. I pray for you. The reward of your fasting, your praying, your stretching in the spirit, we pull it from the realm of the spirit and command it to appear in the physical. Amen. The same way you rejoice over the testimony of some of the testimony of somebody, tomorrow may you be the one to stand here. In the name of Jesus Christ. A mark of honor, a mark of favor, a mark of wisdom, a mark upon your life that makes you an epistle of this fasting and prayer session. May it come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I pray that as you move in your room and around, anything that is not of God, just by stepping in, may your atmosphere judge anything that is not of God. Amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. For those of you who are already weary, we supply fresh grace. Fresh grace for fasting. Fresh grace for prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ. Did you get the scripture? The mystery of sacrifice, Psalm 50 verse 5. Please write down the scripture, sorry. Psalm 50 verse 5. John 12, 24. And 2 Corinthians 4.12 Your prayer focus will be on grace. I will be, please don't miss what, don't miss tomorrow's teaching. I will take some little time to teach. I want to share with you from my personal life and certain deep secrets that produce uncommon results. Psalms 50 verse 5 
John 12 verse 24 2 Corinthians 4 verse 12 The focus is the mystery of sacrifice We are praying for grace We are going to be teaching Unveiling the mystery of death and glory I'm going to be showing you The relationship between death and glory You must pass through that cross To ever get to the throne There is no way to the throne When you pray for breakthrough Goliath is coming Without Goliath there is no throne and I will show you that it is weak people who do not have challenges in their lives. It is weak people. Those who follow the path of least resistance are the ones who are at the lower levels in life. Tomorrow I will be challenging you. It takes you losing something to go up. Hallelujah. You must give up something. The Bible says, whosoever keeps his life will lose it. But whosoever loses it shall gain it. It's a mystery. Father, we give you all the praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. As you depart, my God will bless you. You will meet people in your various places that will bless you. In the name of Jesus Christ. After the grace, I'd like you to hug 20 people and tell them we are going from glory to glory. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God. The sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. God bless you. See you tomorrow. Please don't come alone. Invite your friends.